Hey guys, so we have quite a bit of overcast weather lately. It's still pretty cold out here. And two days ago we were in the 80s. So, really quick, so I can bundle back up. There's my t-shirt. We have some new ones coming up. And if you like the t-shirts, they're in the link in the description below. Uh, yes, shameless plug. What we have today is we have the rabbits in the carport anyway because I need to keep them out from under trees in this area. You have ticks that come from the trees. And so that's the advice I've been given. It's always good to take advice from the people who actually live in the area. So if you have a structure that you can put your rabbits in that you can give them shade, but it still has good ventilation, it's a win-win for you. You don't have to build something new. Um, what we're gonna do here is I have some eye hooks um, that I'm gonna screw in and then hang chains from. Very simple, and then I need to just put up a shade cloth on two sides, the side where the sun would be coming up and also the side that the wind would be coming up from. So I will need to put up shade cloth, rain protection, wind protection, and I need to anchor the wind protection so that it's not flapping around if we get a really good wind coming through. So far the cage that has been the wind has been the one with the drop down nesting box. And um, she hasn't kindled. I don't know if she's going to kindle. Uh, she may not have actually been bred, which would surprise me from a Warren system. The other mom, she lost her babies because she didn't pull any wool and she didn't have her babies in the nest box. And then we have a little a little baby. So we're showing you real life homesteading, which everything doesn't work perfectly. Um, if I want to be able to show you a successful kindling, I may have to go actually get another rabbit, which I don't want to do. So I need a, a drill with the drill bit. I need a screwdriver in order to be able to twist the eye bolts in and I need a tape measure just so that I can get it as close to square the chains hanging just above the cage as possible. I wanna hang the cage from the corners because that's where you're gonna have the most strength and it will keep it from bowing. So I do wanna, I do wanna line it up like that. Okay, so when I set the cages, it's the kids who do the chores, so I need to make sure that it's a good height for the kids. Okay, so this uh, chain, it does need to be heavy. I think it was $6, it was $12 total for everything we got, but this was only $6. And I'm thinking that rather than needing another safety attacher like a carabiner, instead what I can do is take out the ones I just put in and just loop these through the eye. Okay, so because the kids do chores, I need to make sure the cage is low enough that they can actually get into the cage. So I'm gonna measure from the top of the cage to the bottom of the cage, which is 25 inches. Those are actually pretty crappy. They're starting to bend on me. Um, they'll still hold up a rabbit hutch, but uh, not impressed. Hey babe, do you have a second to help me hang this? Okay, so I don't remember what these are called. They're not carabiners, they're quick links. And you, an S hook is not good enough because they slip off when the bunny moves and you're gonna have a cage drop. They have to actually be secure and locking. 
Okay, so I'm gonna hook these on and then we'll just kind of have to go with it. That one and this one both need to have a link taken up. So, did you want to explain um, that? Because look, these two, these two are super loose. Those two are going to be tight. So, I think if you take that one in, it'll fix the whole problem. Just take that one up one link. Do you want to talk about it while I'm doing it? Um, you want it to be square. One of the problems was is when I put the links on at the top, the eye bolts, the eye screws, they bent, and so the distance from the top of the chain to the bottom of the chain, even though I measured them all at 34 inches is not exact but now it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be exact it just they all need to have some tension on them so that as the bunny runs across the cage you it's not it's not jittering so we just took a link out so we just took a link out and she's super happy in her drop in her drop down box and you do need to put cardboard in it to protect her feet but you can see this cage is really clean and looks really nice. So I'm really happy with it. I think it's gonna be nice in here. And again, I have the level of the door at a good height for the girls to be able to reach in and reach out. But I will need to put in a shade cloth here because I'm gonna have wind and rain that's gonna try and blow in. And then I need to put a shade cloth on that side because at midday and after midday, we're gonna have a lot of hot sun trying to come in and we need to make sure that they're not getting too hot. Okay, so I showed you the real way to do it where you go to Home Depot and you get parts. But I'm going to show you the way I would have done it back home, but I would have used baling twine to hang it and just screws. I'm not going to use screws here. Um, I am concerned that they wouldn't be quite strong enough, so instead I'm just going to loop it over the rafters. Um, and one of the nice things about having your cages hung like this is that you can now get the valuable manure out and you can collect it rather than where we had them on sawhorses and... Um, up on pieces of lumber before just so they weren't sitting in manure now i can actually get in there and get the manure out and it's going to look nice again if i was back home i wouldn't be using good rope i would be using baling twine i have some rabbit manure here on the sawhorse i'm just going to scoop in here so that i can put it in for the rabbit manure tea no sense in wasting it or needing to sweep it up later So that there is black gold, it's amazing, it does so many wonderful things for your garden. with this one it's chewable so if you have a really short cage you don't want to use ropes because they'll gnaw through it and then their cage will fall uh, as far as uh, safety for your animals it's probably better just to use the chain something that isn't nibbleable so we're gonna look at how high this mama can reach uh, once we have it set up and see if we think she can reach the ropes and it won't Now what I'm going to do is take some bins and put them underneath the cage and uh, mulch inside them so that it keeps the smell down. You do want to keep some carbon in there and I, we're going to let the rabbits do their work, do their magic. I already know from the wet spot in her cage where she likes to go to the bathroom, so that's where I'm going to put the, the box. For this guy, I think it's in this corner, so that's where I'm going to put the box and then I'm just going to wait and watch and see. So here's my cardboard. Nothing fancy, I just need something that will hold it that I can put uh, carbon into. I'm pretty sure that's where the baby, this is the corner the baby's been pooping on because there's residue here. There's the black gold and I'm gonna go add it to my uh, compost tea bucket 
and I have a whole bunch more that I could scrape up, but it really doesn't take very much when you're using compost tea instead of solid manure. The bees are thirsty. Okay, so I'm gonna lift up the greenhouse. It's getting warm enough in there. It needs to it needs to be open on top of the heat that's coming in from the sun. I also have the hot beds themselves are hot. We have quite a few mushrooms growing. Quite a few mushrooms. They don't stink very bad though. My fingers are wet from the inside of the grove bed and they're sticking. It's cold enough out here that they're sticking to that gate. It is really cold out here. We're gonna have to check for eggs all day today because they are gonna freeze very quickly. Here's the hot bed. I cannot find my seed tray. And I do put these clips on if I'm concerned about wind. I really don't want that. Flipping up. So, okay, let's see what looks in here. Oh, well there's my seed tray. Paige totally didn't see it. Okay, I was, whoops. I was concerned everything in here would be dead. The tray is warm. The seeds are all still alive. Even the sensitive ones are still alive. So it stayed plenty warm in here. Can you see the frost or the heat coming off of it? I need to close this back down right now. So there's onions, there's peas, there's radishes. I even have tomatoes back here. Can you see the can you see the steam? Maybe here, I'll move the I'll move the water. See the water? It's not frozen. But unless I move like you can see the the warmth in here. The soil is warm to the touch. I'm gonna have to move something so you can see it. No, you can't see it. That's basil. And the basil is just fine. The box is warm because the soil, the soil is warm. I'm gonna close that. So, there, it is in the 20s. Um, what I was concerned about was that I was gonna come out here and find that um, especially my, um, my little seed tray of stuff that I just planted with just things like Chinese cabbage, which they're cold resistant, but they're not like heavily frost resistant. That was a really hard freeze last night. You can see the ice. I mean, you know, you saw the ice. And now I just dumped ice all over it on the inside. Anyway, so everything in there is happy and fine in the 20s because the hotbed itself is very warm. Even though there's ice on the inside, the soil is warm, the bed is warm, the plants are warm.